All right, welcome, guys. It is December 8th. You're listening to the Pixels Get Me podcast. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about the typical gaming, tech, and new media type stuff. Uh, tonight, we have with us on the round table uh, three guests, um, but I'll go first. Uh, I'm Pixels. Uh, Pixels Get Me over at Mixer.com, streaming live. Uh, we're also going to have this up on YouTube and Anchor, so feel free to listen to it however it is that you find us. And, uh, and let us know in the comments if there's uh, an article that we missed or if there's something you want to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about it next week. Um, so let's uh, let's introduce on the round table Curbs. Do we got Curbs in, in the house? Hello. Hi, how's it going? What's up? <laughs> Pretty mellow tonight, Curbs. What yeah. you uh, what you up to, man? What are you playing? I got a drink. That's all I got for you. Move on. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks so much, Curbs. And yeah, uh, next no problem, we, anytime. <laughs> next we have Firebird one two nine. What's up, Firebird? Hey, Pixels. <laughs> what are you What are you playing nowadays, Firebird? Uh, so I've actually got the new Super Smash Brothers game. So played that quite a bit today. And other than that, I started playing some more Dungeons and Dragons online and streamed a little bit of that the other day. Oh, awesome, dude! And you're streaming over at Mixer or somewhere else? Uh, that was on both Mixer and Twitch. All right, cool. Restreaming, nice. Right. All right. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was about to say, got to get it out as many places as you can. So. Yeah, it's part of the, part of the game, man. Good stuff. Oh yeah. All right, and then our third guest on the round table is the King S J. What's going Hello. on, man? Welcome, dude. Not much. Excited to be here. I'm happy. Yeah. Thanks so much for hanging out. So, uh, so where where are you at? Uh, where do you stream and uh, what are you playing lately? I'm on Mixer, uh, mixer.com slash the King SJ. I'm a variety streamer and partner there. I do all the stuff and the things on the internet. <laughs> awesome. You're also on the Breath of Variety with us, right? Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. On the stream team there. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll be talking a little bit later into the new media stuff about the, uh, the Mixer season two stuff, but you're actually partnered on Mixer. So it'll be interesting to hear mm-hmm. your. Uh, your take on it. I don't know how much we can talk about where we talk about the future, like embers and stuff like that. Um, but if we yeah. can't talk about that, I get it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about sparks at least and cover that for sure. Yeah, we can do that. Cool. Cool. Um, what, what were you recently playing? What, what have you been playing over the last week? I think you were playing some realm Royale on Xbox. Oh man. Yeah. I've been playing a lot of realm Royale. Uh, it's crazy addicted to that game. Um, red dead redemption two. uh, doing a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the craziness that you can do in that game. Uh, I play everything, man. I've been I've been really addicted to those. Uh, some Fallout 76. People hate it, but I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. Okay, um, cool. Just everything, man. Sweet. All right, cool. So let's uh let's get into the uh, the news for the week. Um, the first bit that I wanted to talk about was the Game Awards that actually aired last night. Um, mm-hmm. there was a lot of uh, you know, I was expecting. God of War initially to start just taking everything by storm, and then Red Dead was uh, was winning, and then winning, and then winning. So I was kind of feeling bad for uh, for God of War, but then they ended up clutching it at the end. So it was pretty pretty cool to watch. Um, Do you guys watch it? I know I think the King S J actually was doing a stream with his community, like narrating or something else. Yeah, yeah. We we just kind of sat down and watched it together. I hosted it and we just chit chatted while it was live. Pretty cool, but you're exactly right. Um Red Dead took a lot and then uh God of War took what mattered. <laughs> Game of the year. <laughs> Snagged it up. So I was pretty happy with that though. Well deserved. Yeah. No, it was uh it was it was cool to watch because like you start seeing the uh the climate in the room change, you know? Like you're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Red Dead, yeah, they had the first three rows for a reason. Okay, cool, they're going to be getting up a lot tonight. You know, like that sort of thing. I was like, oh, man, it's like Red Dead tonight. But, uh, but yeah, there was, like, even Spider-Man, like, I don't even think Spider-Man got anything. Like, I don't they think got he won anything. They no. got a nod yeah. in every category that they could compete in, and uh, that's a, that's pretty amazing, too. But I mean, they had a lot of tough competition to go against. Red Dead is an amazing game. God of War, obviously, is amazing. Uh, Spider-Man, I haven't played it. But everything I've seen and all the all the praise it's been getting, but I mean it's it's been a, a great year for video games. So to to come across those games, it's going to be hard to 
to topple there, especially with what Rockstar's been putting out lately. So, yeah, yeah totally. it's rough. And Steel Toad Boots, he's got a. He's saying uh, it's a shame because the game's freaking amazing. I'm pretty sure you're talking uh, Spider Man, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't yeah. been been able to play it yet. I have not been able to play Spider Man, Red Dead, or God of War, which uh, mm-hmm. makes me makes me want to variety it up for a couple months and just play through all those because, um, you know, they're obviously winning for good reason. Just I'm addicted to other other grinds at the moment rather than the, the story the story stuff, you know. Yeah, I still need to play some God of War as well as Spider-Man. They're both great games. I just haven't been able to give them them yet. Yeah, Steel Toad has got a got a point on the sample size. He's saying the the sample size is too small. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but it was uh, I thought it was kind of shady. I, I I don't know if um, I'm I'm gonna look for the I'm looking for the category real quick. Oh yeah, so. Um, there was a category called best sports slash racing. And I was like, um, did they just, cause you know, there wasn't any other racing games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did they, they just, they did they just make Forza uh, win a bigger category? And yeah, that's exactly what they did. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is because, um, to add unnecessary, if you don't have that much like competition, like uh, like Forza didn't really have any other competition other than itself. They had Forza Seven and then Forza Horizon Four. Um, yeah. In terms of racing, they put it in there with sports because it is technically racing is technically considered a sport. Yeah, except that they had to th- put the slash racing at the end because they know yeah. it's not a sport. <laughs> yeah. I was like, really? They they got Forza into that category and now Forza is going to win. And like, yeah, Tiger Woods why, got snubbed. Yeah, why were you a? Yeah, why were you in a? Why'd you make a sports game this year if you knew Forza Horizon 4 was going to be up against you? But anyway. Um, but yeah. When, I, when I, we're I, talking about the, the, the sample size here, I, I think it's perfect because it came out it came out at um, a decent amount of time for enough people to play it um, and get through the campaign. A bunch of reviewers got it. A bunch of people got it early access. You were able to buy it and actually you know, get a feel for the game. Complete the game if you played it. Um, right. You know, so I, I think it was the perfect time. I think the cutoff is December first for uh, game of the year, actually. So kind of weird, <laughs> but I, I think it was the perfect amount of time. Um, and after playing it, it was definitely uh, my pick for for game of the year. So I understand so, why. So how much uh, how much time did you play Forza? How much time did I play Forza? Yeah. Oh, I've put like maybe fifty hours into Forza. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I meant um, for the sample size for Red Dead. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was sure, like, I don't know if you guys ever saw that uh, that tweet that came out where it was basically the Avengers Infinity War scene, and, uh, and they had all the Battle Royale games were, like, the bad guys, and, like, the Avengers characters were the single-player games, like God of War... Uh, Spider-Man, all that. So it's a solid, it's a solid tweet meme thing. But basically, they do that whole uh, end fight with Thor coming down, and uh, and he's basically Red Dead Redemption two, and like it explodes into like <laughs> all of the reviews saying like ten out of ten, ten out of ten, ten out of ten, perfect, inspirational, blah blah blah. And it's just like, um, and it was you know they had Fortnite, they had PUBG, they had uh, a couple other you know VR games. As the bad guys just like totally just devastating the the single player games but uh but yeah it's it seemed like it, it could have gone a certain way last night with yeah well you know, steel toads bringing it up like the fortnite side like fortnite didn't get more than it got you know like it could have you know, it could have well, just swept the whole night in a couple different there's ways no, you know there's no substance to it you can't give fortnite best score you can't give it um, best narrative, anything like that. So there's really not too many categories that it could have truly been nominated for. When it came out, it could have, you know, it, it got game of the year, or voted for game of the year, I should say. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can't really put it into much categories, especially with so many other games out there that actually, you know, put production value <laughs> into their their sounds, their effects, their visual stuff like that. So. Yeah, and, and the other part is like how they how they voted for him, you know, like it was part uh, reviewer critics and it was part social media type 
type stuff. So um, they could have tipped it, like they could have tipped Fortnite pretty hard, but in the end, like when you have, you know, 96, you know, uh, nine out of tens, you know, in like Red Dead or Spider-Man's or, or God of War's case, you know, like you can't, you can't compete. But as for, well, as for the narrative of Fortnite, like there is a story, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, they're, they're slowly releasing it and it's not necessarily making sense yet, but it, there's probably going to be a movie someday. You know, like, I don't know, you know? Yeah. Cause I did play the story on that for a bit. I did actually get it before battle Royale got released. Yeah. Like save the world. And, right. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a lot of the same thing over and over. I wouldn't really even call it a story. Aliens. <laughs> yeah, probably. There's the story. Just nailed it. Right. Best narrative. Cool. 2018. And that, that, that's another thing. There wasn't really like an alien game this year. You know, when you're looking at the. Yeah, there really wasn't like an alien game. That's weird, right? Like sci fi and stuff like that? Yeah. There like, was, sci fi wasn't but, really um, represented. Prey came out this year, didn't it? Or was that last year? I think it was last year, man. Wow. Where's the time gone? <laughs> so many good games came out well regardless yeah there's not too many sci-fi um i am surprised that forza didn't fit into game of the year uh because it's pretty dang good but yeah i mean a bunch of good picks so it was, it was pretty rough to narrow it down to five there yeah and then there's there's this other uh there's other this other category called games for impact and i'm kind of curious with celeste because uh i need to I need to look into this game a little bit more and understand like what the deal is, but I guess it's pretty profound stuff, you know. It's Have a big advocate so- for mental health. Yeah, like they um, even specifically said that in their in their thank you speech, you know, like, hey, if this game has helped you at all, you know, you're an amazing person, you know. And it's just like, well, what what is the deal, you know? It's a it's a crazy uh, side scroller kind of puzzleish metroidvania type <laughs> yeah that's what that's what it looked like i didn't think there was going to yeah. be like a mental health uh side yeah, just, of it you know it's got a uh an amazing soundtrack and i guess like it just got people into games again got them out of their mind and, and into the game which is kind of cool that a game like that can do it and that's why um it very much deserved to be voted for game of the year because i i think that's what it boils down to a lot when a game can help somebody um you know get out of their brain for a minute uh that's that's a game right that's yeah. that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to escape reality and stuff like that so it doesn't matter if it has red dead redemption 4k graphics or if it has you know super mario World graphics you know if it's helping it's it's definitely worth it yep yeah. and with you, anyone else got anything on the uh the game awards side uh i got two things <laughs> Glad God of War won uh, Game of the Year. But if I have to hear Kratos say boy again, I'm going to be, I'm going to rip my ears off. And yeah. why did Monster Hunter World win Best Roleplay? Uh, or Pillars of Eternity, Octopath, and Nino Cooney? Are you kidding me? What? I, I did think Nino Cooney was going to take that, to be honest. Yeah. Like, Monster, Hunter's, uh, Monster Hunter's a worthy competitor, though. It's not got a really forty hour game. I mean, it is. You level up, but uh, I, guess. <laughs> I thought that's what, it, that's, uh, that's what it considers now. You level up. And see, I haven't, I haven't played any of them, but I thought Octopath was going to walk away with it because Octopath just the, was good, but it got hit with a lot of criticism. Yeah, but they they actually like ran out of stock of the game, you know, because like mm-hmm. it it went way bigger than they expected, you know, which yeah. says a lot, you know, and, but maybe they just didn't produce enough. I, I don't know. The results were, they were too nostalgic, you know, cause you can yeah. only take a game back so far be- before the system becomes broken and it doesn't yeah. feel good anymore. So that's kind of what happened uh, with Octopath. I love turn-based RPGs and JRPGs and stuff like that. A big fan of them, but um, it's kind of evolving now. So to to go from Octopath to like something like Kingdom Hearts and then you go back to that is kind of Yeah. Yeah, it's a change of pace. Yeah, totally. I don't know. I just think Monster Hunter World with its horrendous story that is legitimately the worst story I've played in years. 
And this is Curbs, not, who has played all the Monster Hunters, right? Like, this is your least every favorite. Monster Hunter yeah. from the West, and this is the worst. Well, no, Try was the worst. This is the second worst Monster Hunter. And the story is just awful. You have to, in order to play with your friends, you have to go through, at least for low rank, you have to go through three quarters of each mission before you can act. Like, you and your friends have to go through three quarters of each mission in order to watch all of the cutscenes before you can actually join each other. It's, it's the stoop, no. No. I liked it. It was yeah, my first though. It was my you. first Monster Hunter. Uh, get out. I, I think, I think, I think that's, that's the deal though with, with Monster Hunter World. It was a gateway. It was like a yeah. gateway Monster Hunter drug for a lot of yeah. people. It was their first yeah. one, so. Overall, it's a solid game. It's just, it, mm. <laughs> I played Monster Hunter World, and I agree with you, Curbs. It Yay. needed a lot of work when it comes to the multiplayer. It wasn't, it wasn't the best setup for it at all. It was. I enjoyed the game, but it was also really dry. I couldn't play a lot of it at once. Yeah, I mean, I could go on for well over an hour on things that I didn't like about that game, but overall, it was. Well, solid for a here, over, uh, overall as a game. Here's my opinion. I had a cat that followed me around that used a floaty in a pool. <laughs> right. Whenever we went there, dude, I'm excited. I'm into it. But, but I'm all about the it. other games, you can play as said cat. But I don't. I don't have those ones. Yeah. yeah but those ones are better. So so Curbs got me to get uh, Monster Hunter Generations for Ultimate for the Switch. And I was enjoying mm. it a lot. The only reason I don't stream it a lot is because I'm still working out the Switch volume issues that I'm running running into on the stream. So mm. um, I can play Diablo because I can individually like change the the volume in the game, but I couldn't figure out a way to to get the Elgato stuff to work well with the Switch. I'm still looking into it. I don't know, but uh, but it's solid. And yeah, you get you get the uh, what's the name of the the cat again? Oh, Palico. The Palico. You get a Palico, but then you can actually be the Palico, and that's kind of like what got me to want to play it, because I'm like, man, I could be a freaking ninja cat? This is awesome. So. But, um... Uh... <laughs> yeah, Population Killer says he's got 600 plus hours in Monster Hunter World, but I don't feel like it was an RPG. Hmm. That's because I RPG agree. has... RPG has advanced, uh, or evolved, I should say, over the years. Like, when they first started saying it, I don't know if you guys remember Mass Effect... Uh, they mm -hmm. they started calling Mass Effect an RPG, and at the same time, I was like, "Dude, there's no way!" Like, I'm I was just playing Final Fantasy. This is not an RPG, but that's that's what it's become. Um, is it because of decision making? Is that like how they why they pawned it no, as an it, RPG? It, um, skills, skill points, stuff like that. Like they consider even uh, Borderlands like an action RPG. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah, you're loading you have up a skill, skill tree points, though. You have a skill tree and up. you have gear. You know that that's yeah. an RPG. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's what it's considered now. Witcher is an RPG, yes. And a very good one. Uh, yeah, so Nino Kuni or Pillar should have won that, but anyway. I agree. I agree. Cool. That's anything about else? All I had on it, so. All right, Firebird, you got anything, dude? Uh, nothing else on this, no. Oh, what'd you guys think of the performances? Uh, uh I loved it, man. Red Dead Medley was uh, was wonderful. I liked it. Yeah, Emotional. Devil, Devil May Cry was pretty intense. Right. I was mosh pitting in my <laughs> office a little bit there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I liked uh, I liked the the theme. You know, I like the symphonic orchestra theme that they opened with. Like that was legit. Yeah. Hans um, Zimmer. Yeah, I liked having. Um, I think at the very end, was it during the game of the year? Um, montage, but they had the mm -hmm. actual artists who've played some of the music for each of the games up there as well, doing their different pieces. Yeah. Like that's what it looked like to me. And I couldn't say because yeah, I'm like I, I don't I don't recognize everybody, but it looked like they had the different they had a representation across the board, which was and pretty they just cool. Combined everything, super cool. Another another high note that I really liked through the night was seeing uh, Xbox, PlayStation, and and Nintendo share the the floor for a minute. Like, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that's my dream. <laughs> One day. One day. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but, yeah, it was it was really cool. It was it was a good show. It was a really good show. I don't know if, it, if Reggie uh, 
towers over those guys. I love Phil Spencer, but Reggie looks like an MMA fighter. He's just a beast, ready man. to beat the crap out of the oh, other yeah. two guys. And he, and, he pro- and he probably would, you know, <laughs> if it, if it, if that's what was required of him last night, he probably just would have went smash on him. He had the I mean, shirt on and everything. The, the Thanos of, <laughs> of those guys there. He's a hulking. They got the switch. If he would have snapped his fingers, it would have been over. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, let's uh, let's move on to uh, to the next article. We're talking about um, Epic coming out with their own uh, game store, mm. uh, where where developers can publish games through the Epic uh, launcher instead of Steam. Um, yep. So this is good for developers because they're going to take uh, less off the top if they publish through Epic. Um, but this is a nice pivot for Epic because um, you know they already have people running the the epic launcher running the epic store or whatever now that fortnite is on there and since it's like a household name now this is kind of how you get a store on everyone's computer um so even if they don't make money like steam is just making tons of money um they're making money off of fortnite so they, they could even take a loss on this just to plant their flag in the ground so what do you guys well, think? They're already, they're already giving away two free games a month. Uh, just just for weeks. having it installed? Yeah. Um, the first one's going to be Subnautica, and the second one is the new Super Meat Boy coming out. Oh, that's dude, that's worth awesome. It. That's awesome. Yeah, just and, just by having it. And, and here's the thing. Uh, my opinion on this is it's it's great for PC gaming. Um, Steam has you know, held that throne for so long that oh, yeah. nobody can come close to it. And Epic's got a, like you yeah. said, they got that Fortnite money. So they can definitely throw their weight around a little bit. Um, it's very limited right now, but I don't think it's going to be Steamish anytime soon. But um, with the ability to give away two free games every month, and especially, you know, Subnautica is already awesome. Uh, and then Super Meat Boy. I mean, who doesn't love that game? I, I think it's gonna it's gonna hold its own, and it's definitely gonna push developers to craft better games on PC uh, because if you guys look through the depths of steam it's not all jewels there oh no, absolutely <laughs> not, not yeah, all there's, winners there's like there's entire websites devoted to you know like the dark depths of steam and the games mm-hmm. that exist you know it's just like what is this like you're yes. a paper clip in an office <laughs> so so this is good what? because i think it's gonna allow people to produce um more high uh, high quality content high quality video games for people so I, I absolutely think it's amazing. Part of what I'm looking forward to seeing is I want to see if it does pick up, what exactly is going to happen with Steam. Like obviously Steam is not going to go to business, but I'm wondering what it's going to look like for them com- actually competing with another game store. Half-Life 3 announced. <laughs> yeah. Even if it doesn't no, ship, just the announcement again, you know? That's, that's what's going to happen. It's not... <laughs> It's just going to be announced. That's it. You're going to see Epic, Epic Store rising among the ranks, and then you're going to see Valve announces Half-Life 3 exclusively yeah, from, on Steam. From something else I've seen about this, though, um, apparently there's what's called the Steam Spy, which was showing like rankings for video games purchased and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, a very mm-hmm. useful, a very useful tool. The guy who developed the Epic Store is the same guy who is doing Steam Spy. Yeah, that's that's, that's the best true. way to get hired, you know? Make make yeah. something amazing and everyone takes notice, you know? Hack the government, then work for the government. Exactly. If you want, you know. <laughs> Don't do that. Kids. Not everyone does Please. that. Some people just continue to hack the government. Um yeah, what we missed in chat earlier, Steel Toad Boots saying, uh I heard the other day where Steam is offering to drop their cut to devs because of this, and more copies sold through Steam, the more percentage they will take off their end as well. And that's a that's a very smart move for Steam, you know, just to kind of keep their their people in their pockets, you know. If it happens, yeah, we'll see. And that, I, I, that's the first I've heard of that, but I, I haven't looked into it much more than just this article. So, uh, well, Epic might not even take off as well as Steam thinks, and then developers are still going to be stuck, you know, paying out to to Steam there. Yeah. So you never know. Also, Discord, like the side Ooh, note, but Discord has a store now where you can get yes. games a couple weeks early or whatever, or their Discord yeah, exclusives, exclusive. which is pretty yeah. cool. 
So, and again, this is just another another piece of software that has made its way on everyone's computer. And they're like, um, well, now that we're on everyone's computer, we should try selling things, you know, just like the the Epic launcher. So it's kind of kind of cool how uh, how people are doing this. It's good. And Steam, you know, Steam needs a wake up call, too. And comp competition is innovation and all that. So it's well, this, good. Is, this is why and not to get too heavily into it, but this is why people say, why can't we have games on all the consoles? Why can't we have Halo on PlayStation? It's like, well, then. Nobody would get creative. Nobody would start pushing that envelope to try and be better than Sony or Sony try to be better than Xbox or anything like that. The Switch wouldn't come about because you just got the same games on every machine. Like, why would you want to create something different? You're just going to make money. So with Steam doing this, um, even if it fails, it's still going to push the devs to to create something for, for their platform, which I think is, dude, that's just awesome. The more be the the better the video games, the the more excited I get. So <laughs> I'm cool with it. What do you think, Curbs? Uh, I think it's a good idea. I think if it pushes Steam to do something, it'll be good. But I feel like it's just going to turn out to be, and that's about all it'll end up being. I'm not sure I if mean, you, you believed yourself it's... or. <laughs> Because he said it's on everyone's computer. I'd like yeah. to strike that from the record. It is not on my computer, so you are wrong. Ouch. All right. No. My, my, uh, this Fortnite is bad, my mistake. But, yeah. yeah, but Unreal Tournament is good. Uh, enough. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they actually just say that they weren't going to be working on Unreal Tournament anymore? So. Um, my nostalgia is still here. Okay, don't no, kill. No, no. <laughs> Unreal Tournament is—it's one of those games where you gotta play it with friends. But yeah, but that's some of my highlights of of PC gaming was Unreal and Unreal Tournament, Unreal Tournament Two K Three. Yeah, like the oh my gosh, yeah, so legit. Was the first one I played, and that one was on the PS Three that I played that one. Oof. I'm sorry you played that on a console, man. Yeah, that just hurt my heart a little bit. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> just, ow. <laughs> That's okay. I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop judging. But, um, but yeah, like that was, that was like the heyday of land parties and stuff, man. Like that was that was fun. Very much agreed. So should I? Um back out for a second while you old people talk about your heydays yeah let's move on to the next article we're, okay. we're losing curves in the the next generation um all right so uh let's talk about uh red dead online and the economy issues uh mm -hmm. but i guess changes changes are coming soon i don't know if uh, effective today changes are are happening like you guys who have played red dead online and stuff what do you think why can't people just stop complaining about stuff on the internet right because <laughs> everyone has a voice sj everyone has I a voice hate it stop having voices internet cut it off all right chat Here's we need thing. you to stop talking while sj is <laughs> talking it's it's the thing it's the same thing that goes back to star wars um one person complains about something and it just snowballs to me i played red dead online when it came out um didn't have a problem making money People are like, it costs $800 to get a shotgun. Yeah, we'll play the game for more than 20 minutes and you'll get it. Mm. Like, it's not that bad. And then people just complain and then complain and then you go to Reddit and then you downvote everything. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then Rockstar goes, oh, we're going to change it, I guess. We don't want Star Wars to happen to us, too. And then yep. that's just what happens. The game was fine. I thought the economy was fine. Had no issues with it. <sighs> it wasn't. It wasn't. For it wasn't Battlefront. Computers. It wasn't Battlefront level issues though, right? Because Battlefront had a lot of I flack still, for good reason. I still didn't think it was that bad uh, in terms of Battlefront, but um, no, not even not even to that caliber. Um, it was just like people were like, "It takes too long to make money." These are the same people that have played Grand Theft Auto for the last five years, uh, just buying shark cards and and doing all that. So oh, they can't buy a shark card right now, so they're a little upset. Part of it with that though is GTA 5, you get a lot more time, a lot faster, but things also deal with in dollars on there. So you gotta expect to get more money in that than you're gonna get from a mission in Red Dead. 
Yeah, you're getting like two dollars and thirty three cents, literally. Right, which is about the same as probably twenty three hundred dollars or so. Yeah, yeah, and people are just freaking right. out because they didn't understand that in the eighteen hundreds you didn't make fifty thousand dollars by robbing a a little liquor store. Yeah, nineteen dollars goes a long way in the West. It really does. It does. <laughs> Buy you some hair pomade. Yeah. No, it's it, so it's. You know what? I get it. The internet's gonna complain. Um, they, maybe everybody's just really nice in Red Dead, and they don't rob people and and do stuff like outlaws to get the money. But it to me, it was really easy to to make the money. I did it. I put the I played five hours the first day it came out. Had enough to do pretty much whatever I wanted. So I don't know. I'm old. I guess. <laughs> I guess what they were doing yesterday, though, as part of this update to the currency was if you had played it up through any point from when the beta came out to 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. Pacific time, you were actually getting 250 in-game dollars and 15 mm -hmm. bars. Yeah, which is cool. Shout, so, I mean, everybody who played GTA is like, what? $200? Like, I get that when I beat somebody to death on the street. <laughs> yeah, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You can start your own posse with $200. Yeah, 200 or 250 that's that's quite a bit, probably. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing to me. I, I can go on a rant all day about how one person cries and changes the changes the game completely, <laughs> but uh, you know what? If, it, if they change it and everybody's happy, then, then that's fine. All right, Curves, you got anything on this? Uh, do we know exactly how they're rebalancing it? or Just giving free stuff to people just... who played it? Is that it? No, it's it's a rebalance. They're going to make it to where uh, it's less grindy, I guess. Um, hmm. So maybe you get yeah. two, two X or three X amount of money drops and stuff like that. Make it not so painful. Yeah, instead of like $1.50, you'll get like, you know, $2.50, so... Okay. Helps you out a little bit. I, I'm just waiting for them to in, implement uh, Red Dead's version of shark cards into this, because I, I can't see Rockstar not doing that. Oh no, they'll do it for sure. I mean, that's what the the gold nuggets. You're going to be able to buy gold bars and stuff like that. Um, so they'll probably be called like gold cards or something like that, or I don't know. Something. I mean, you got to make money. You gotta think these guys are putting mm -hmm. out all this content and, the, and then all the DLC. If you think about it, for GTA Five, all the DLC was free, right? You didn't have to pay a dime for any of it. Yeah, uh, which is super cool. Um, and how do you support the devs by doing that? Buy a shark card, right? Mm -hmm. and that's they work all yeah. those hours on it. They're not getting paid, uh, you know, any any anything extra. So you buy a shark card, it supports them. Yeah, I do believe shark cards are. I mean, I don't feel the need to buy microtransaction nope, anything. Me either. In terms of progress, like cosmetic, maybe, but progress, no. Uh, I do think their microtransactions are obscenely expensive for what you get. Yeah, I mean, I agree. But again, it caters to a certain crowd True. who like to use their parents' credit cards <laughs> and buy $100 worth of I don't know, horses, 2 horses, million horses. currency? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like the games, not a fan of the developers specifically. Hmm. Overall. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just me. I don't know. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's I'm move on. I'm not going to expand on that in any way. So. <laughs> we can, I got it. But we if can... you guys really want me to. We can bring in a uh, next next podcast. Maybe bring in a Rockstar Games Crunch article or something like that, <laughs> mm. and then we can we can throw some flack. At. You, you get you gonna give me some time? Pitch? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you some time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, to the tech side. So that's it for games. Um, let's talk a little bit about technology that's coming out soon. Um, we have a article from The Verge about a 5G Samsung phone coming to Verizon by June. Um, so 5G is uh, is the next iteration of, of cell phone tech. 
Um, I'm kind of more excited about 5G. Um, I'm more for the, the augmented reality experience that that kind of brings because when you, uh, if we, if we talk, um, successful, successful apps in the past, you know, one of those would be Pokemon Go. Um, it's not quite, you know, AR, um, it can be, I mean, you could put it in AR mode, but that's not really, uh, what I'm thinking for, for the next, for the next bits, but the, uh, so 5G tech will give us um, better positional tracking rather than like GPS or like a triple uh, triangulated cell phone tower type deal. 5G kind of gets you down to uh, to sometimes just a couple feet in one direction. And uh, and I think with the tracking, it kind of lets us have a better augmented reality experience. Like this has to happen so that um, when you're in your house or if you're in the supermarket or if you're on the road, that the items around you are going to be pinned and mapped based on a 5G signal. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of more excited about that side of it because I know I know augmented reality is the next the next thing. I know we're not we're not there yet, but when the 5G uh, Legos start coming down and 5G is everywhere, um, there's there's talks about like there was a there was a project. Um, I'm kind of going monologue here, sorry guys, but there was a project uh, for, I believe it was Chicago, where they put up like basically an augmented reality, um, I had to Google the name of it, but an augmented reality landscape over the buildings. So you basically go on a city walk, but at the same time, an augmented reality device, whether it be an iPad or an iPhone or whatever, um, or augmented reality glasses, would show canyons and rivers and jungles and all that throughout because it was perfectly mapped um so that's that stuff's coming and that's exciting because you know the the visual taken is one thing but the gaming that comes with that is a whole other level um so mobile gaming with 5g is going to be completely mind-blowing to anyone who uh yeah exactly great vr while driving gta for real yeah scary stuff people might do that <laughs> <laughs> a mix of GTA in real life, like that that could be a bad thing. Um maybe when the cars are self driving it'll be safer. I don't know. But um but yeah, so what do you guys think about uh five G? I'm pretty excited for it. Um it definitely opens it up to where there's a lot more you can do. So one of the cool things about five G is I wanna say it's gonna I wanna say the internet speeds around 100 megabits per second, which is what I get from my, what I'm supposed to get from my provider now, with an upload speed of like 50 megabits per second. Yeah, so you could just sure. push right from there. You don't even need an internet provider. You just get your phone provider, and then you push it out through a wireless hotspot, and you're done. Here's here's my question. When are humans going to turn into humans from Wally? -E? Yeah, dude, we're getting there, right? Look, like, you listen to Elon Musk about like 10 years. <laughs> Something like that, 10, 20 years. Because this, this, all right, so the 5G stuff that they can do is crazy, but, and, and I'm all for it. And the, the augmented reality, I think that stuff is so cool, but it, I walk around with my phone out enough as it is. You know, like I walk around with devices that, and I try to put it in my pocket. You know, how many times are people going to be crossing the street in New York and just get plowed over by a taxi because they were checking out a canyon that was in New York before people go, maybe we shouldn't keep advancing this. <laughs> like that's that's what I'm trying to debate. The, the speeds are awesome. They're fast. But do you really need to go that fast? It's a survival of the fittest thing, man. Like if everyone wants to get hit by self-driving buses, I mean, let them, right? I guess that's a, that's a good that's a good way to think yeah, of it. Well, we lost another one today. It's like, yeah, you know, they, they weren't fit to live in a, a techno-influenced world, you know? It, it's just weird, man. <laughs> technology technology scare me. The, the 5G thing, the, the VR that'll never kick off. Don't say that it ever will. It's not oh going to. Oh, my gosh. But there there was a category at the awards, man. That means something, right? Oh, God, yeah. Do you remember when Virtual Boy won awards back in the day? Do you remember how awesome Virtual Boy was? Yeah, it looked like you, somebody stabbed you in the eyes and you were just staring at your own blood. 
Yeah, it was so good. Mario Tennis on Virtual <laughs> Boy was life changing. Not joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things, come, things come and go and i also think virtual reality is one of them i mean i've got a 3d tv not too long after they came out and look at where it is now yeah but but okay so so you guys are you guys are comparing uh yeah you're not talking about like the end game right so so where 3d tvs uh iterated into stereoscopic vision to give people a more immersive experience um having to have glasses on your head killed it Okay, cool. Um, the 3DS was kind of annoying because it would glitch a little bit because it was trying to track you. Um, VR is okay, but it puts you in a box, right? But AR, which is what all of this stuff is going to, like all those things need to happen to make AR happen and for people to understand it and actually have buy-in, like that is going to be completely ridiculous. AR's uh, end game is iRobot. Is, uh, who, who has not seen Ready Player One or read the book? I have not. Okay, um, man, dude, SJ, sorry, man, re required, required reading movie. list. You so own sorry. the book. You own yes. the book, dude. All right. So, 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 side note, side note. I owned the book for two years and I didn't even read it because it came in a loot crate once, and I was uh, like, oh, and, I, and I was like, yeah, nice. I don't have time for a book right now, and I got the loot crate edition of Ready Player One, and then I picked it up. Because I was, hmm. you know, away from the family on a trip for like a long time, and I was like, man, I'm just gonna read a book. And I, I started reading it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna wait till I'm back with my wife because she absolutely loves the '80s. So I, I started telling her parts about it, and I ended up reading the entire book to her out loud, like audiobook style, mm -hmm. for a whole weekend. Like it was so good, dude. It's so good. My my wife has read it, and she's practically breaking my legs off because I have not finished it yet. So, dude, like seriously, you could just read it, read it on stream, man. Ooh. Just just get Staring through it. Fi fi head. Find a way. No. Find a way to read this book, man. Like if stream time is, is keeping you from reading it, you need to read it on stream because it will it will blow your freaking mind. It's so good. Yeah, I haven't watched the movie or read the book. Um Firebird. Pretty good book. Firebird, you're not allowed back in my chat until you've read the book, man. <laughs> uh, then, uh, Firebird, I'll go with you because I haven't read or Alright, see you curves. <laughs> <laughs> curves might actually leave right now but please don't do I'm, it curves. <laughs> i'm more than happy to. <laughs> all right well i think it's i think it's a legit uh yeah it's a good story and and it definitely shows a part of what the future could be and yes people dying uh, vr will have people dying by starving um that already happens in like playing starcraft in korea so that's no there's nothing Just new there that. <laughs> so people die all the time playing video games it's it's not a not a big deal yeah i feel like that's it's more of just I, I feel like you get more blood clots in the knees from starcraft over there than star yeah <laughs> it just made me move my legs just by saying <laughs> i just started uh, moving around in my chair a little bit <laughs> on the whole vr thing though i think i i think it would have to kind of evolve sort of like technologically sure but I think in terms of practicality, it will as well, like kind of how phones did, going from the big block you had to carry around mm -hmm. into the practicality of the smartphone. Yep. I feel like it, it will like basically slim down as well as get more advanced. Well, it'll have to become maybe, AR. But, VR yeah. and AR will have to combine to VAR no, virtual. It's, it's XR. It's XR mixed yeah. reality. Yeah. It's already got an AR. Yeah. Yeah, it's already happening. <laughs> right, so nice what try, man. I see, <laughs> what I see happening is VR is going to continue to improve. And then it's going to hit a wall. And then when it finally busts through that wall after it's leveled off, it's going to just move all into AR. I, I think VR it hit that wall already. AR. I, I honestly think it hit the wall. And I don't yeah. think it's going to make a comeback at all. There are still improvements they're working on with VR. There's still other things that they can do. But really, it's just a matter of getting it to that final point. And then they can start moving into AR. I know they've already gotten... Oh, oh we started cracking there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, they've already started on AR, but there's definitely more improvements and research on VR will help that. It's going to be Minority Report soon. Yeah, totally, man. Yeah, people are already working on that stuff. It's scary. Mm-hmm. I have some bad thoughts. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right. Do you want to share them or you want to just move on? No, God, no. We're, <laughs> All we're right, on cool. team. All right, sweet. <laughs> but don't want to. That yes, that that is what pushes an industry. Correct. That's it, one of the reasons the internet is still a thing. All right. Um, Pixels give me podcast is meant to share bad thoughts. <laughs> no, dude, we can we can have a we can have a bad thoughts podcast if you want. We can do another one. This whole separate thing. All right. Um, <laughs> can we do an illicit podcast? Just that's just the worst things. Just no, the no. most terrible things we can think. Of. <laughs> Like, no absolutely well, not mm. if we if we do it my name will not be attached to it but we can still do it <laughs> all right all right so uh a couple of things um i missed in chat <laughs> i think if you made people wear the old mario tennis vr for one hour they will be blind case closed from population killer i love it thanks uh -huh. man that's fantastic um and then uh there was something else that was funny too oh yeah hey. Uh, Evil Goatman made a, made a note about Will Wheaton reading uh, Ready Player One. Absolutely, man. He does a fantastic job reading through the book. It's really good. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to the next article. Cool, everybody? Yeah, let's do it. Sure. Right. But any loot <sighs> boxes, that's already been developed. That's not a solid argument. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right, Inferno, we will do uh, workouts after the podcast. Thanks so much, man. All right, so for the uh, for another tech article, we've got Microsoft ditching Edge on Windows 10, finally. <clears throat> and they're going to a Chromium-based browser. So basically, instead of uh, letting Google have all of the search data and uh, user history and all that stuff, Microsoft's like, hey, we can make Chrome because Chromium's free, and uh, we could iterate on that. So Microsoft is making Chrome. Hmm. Uh. But isn't Edge the fastest way to browse? Uh, it was right, <laughs> except except that um, you know the... what I I will give you something. Edge uh, was actually uh, the best quality to watch Netflix in, believe it or not. Okay, it had the uh, the best picture quality. So I do have one nice thing to say about Edge. You're welcome, Microsoft. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's all I, I think, got. I think there was one make thing. Chrome. Why not? I think there was one thing I used Edge for ever. Um, for i think it was for a website that chrome because it was uh, chrome does a really good job protecting people from going to places in the internet that you shouldn't go and this wasn't even like a uh, a bad place this was just some dude's insurance site that had been hacked so many times that google was like dude don't even go here you don't even know what it is and i'm like dude it's just some insurance guy's site so i had to use edge to get there hmm. but edge took me there they didn't say a thing about how much he'd been hacked either <laughs> <laughs> they were just like, sure, go check out insurance guy's site. I was like, oh, okay, cool. All right, there's nothing here. We're good. Again, this, this is uh, uh, Epic uh, taking a page out of Blue Hole's book, right? Yes. So Microsoft is just doing what Chrome's doing. Why not? Exactly. You know what? It might turn into the best. It might replace Chrome. Then maybe yes. they can improve their stores, and it would be awesome. I'd be yes. fine with it. it. There's no, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's laughable because they, they've, they've promoted Edge so much. Literally every time you turn on your PC, it's right there. But um, I use Chrome. Everybody uses Chrome. I don't know anybody that actually uses Edge. It just Chrome's a better option. Yeah. So what I'm understanding of it is Edge is actually being rebuilt, but through Chromium. So it's still going to be yep. their Edge browser, but it's using the Chromium. Yeah. Backbone. Correct, because it's better yeah. than anything they could build. Right. <laughs> My Chrome <laughs> Soft. Ooh, they should go with that. But something they don't actually mention in this article anywhere is actually being updated to release on Windows 7 and Windows 8. So right. both those operating systems are also getting that, plus they're actually working on packaging it so it can be released on Apple as well. Yeah, there, there's a whole other there's a whole other thing after that, right? So so Chrome has enabled Google to create a computer that's completely, completely safe and just works called a Chromebook, right? right. And uh, and this kind of opens up Microsoft to make their own version of a Chromebook as well, which I don't know if people are thinking about yet. 
but when you simplify Windows even more and you make it... I mean, isn't that what a Surface is? Uh, Surface is still running uh, Windows, so this would be running Windows Chromium, which would just be the browser that people use to do uh, email and, and Pinterest and whatever else they want to do. Okay. You know, like... I gotcha. So, so it'll work and they'll be able to build apps. They'll, they'll even be able to just straight up sideload the Chrome store into their thing because it's Chromium based, you know, like, I mean, it's scary stuff like that. They'd be able to just, Hey, yeah, we have a Chromebook now. It's not called a Chromebook. It's called this. And everyone would be like, but what? Like, isn't, and, and a, a huge problem with Chromebooks is just the adoption. Like people don't understand, like this computer does everything that you do with your computer and it works 10 times faster. Yeah. And it's almost 10 times cheaper sometimes, you know, and it's like, why don't you use it? And people are like, mm, I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Mm. I've seen people like in the store just be like, mm, no, it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. You get one for like 200 bucks. Like people yeah, are 150, 150 yeah. bucks right now. Use, use my mom for an example. She goes, ah, what laptop should I buy? I'm like, get a Chromebook. Why? All you do is browse the internet. What the heck are you going to do? You don't play any games? And she's like, well, what if I... Uh, no, you watch no, YouTube no and you, what if. Yeah. you look at Pinterest. <laughs> That's it. Get you a Chromebook and then you're fine. But, I mean, $200, doesn't it mean it's, like, kind of crappy? Just buy, buy the Chromebook, yeah. please. That's exactly what it means, but that's kind of all you need, so... Yeah, yeah it's just it's just a browser. You can play Solitaire on it still. You're all right. She could buy she could buy a seven hundred dollar Windows laptop and use you know not more than eight percent of its processor for the history of its entire life. You know, mm -hmm. or she could just yeah. get a Chromebook for a fraction of the price. But Walmart gaming PC, yes, that's what I have. <laughs> no, that's no. Okay, that's so um. She's gonna be paying like twenty one hundred dollars. And get something that's worth like seven. It's not. No. No. My dad bought a twenty-seven hundred dollar laptop to play EverQuest Two on. I can, man. That's what it took back then. <laughs> EverQuest this Two is, was legit. <laughs> this was a couple of years ago. Oh, well, that's too bad. <laughs> so we're talking about when EverQuest Two came out, like fifteen years ago or whatever that was. Well, he, he loves the game. I mean, he played it since I used to play it with him. We played it back in probably around 2006 or 2007. And he's just kept playing it since then. It's EverQuest, man. You can keep playing it till you die. Right. Yeah, he, uh, he bought quite the laptop. It's a pretty good one. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the last article we've got. So we're going to be talking about Mixer uh, for a moment in the new media section. Um, so Mixer just recently uh, went into season two, um, probably less than a month ago, I want to say. Maybe it's been a month. I don't know. Um, but basically, uh, the sparks that you uh, that you earn while watching Mixer, if you're logged in and you're a Mixer user. Um, you can use these sparks to interact with a board, kind of like on my stream when I have an arcade machine. But now, the sparks actually have value um, for partnered streamers on Mixer. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's given a it's given a way for uh, partners on Mixer to get a little bit of side monetization from their communities, especially if they uh, if they're able to, you know build up a large amount of sparks for their for their favorite streamer and then just launch all of these uh these sparks in their direction um it's a little and population killer is saying it's it's twitch bits really but it's kind of mm. not because twitch mm. bits take money to get unless you're mm. amazon prime twitch prime and you might get some randomly but or uh but yeah twitch doesn't have like this 40 hours of ads and then you'll have like a dollar Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, so you can just watch ads and get bits on Twitch. Yeah, but you get like sometimes per <laughs> ad, and they're like three minute ads. It's still... ouch, that's painful. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, what are your thoughts, guys? I think this article saying that Twitter Mixer has always been second fiddle is. Gem 
but so and then <laughs> Go ahead. Oh no, I was just I was going to say it, I mean here here's the thing. Mixer obviously um doesn't have the popularity as Twitch, right? Yeah. But um and, and it's the same thing, man. When Twitch started off, Twitch was JTV, Justin mm-hmm. TV back yep. in the day and it was it was in Mixer's, you know, uh boots right now, trying to find some ground, trying to innovate, trying to get ahead of the game and they did that and they did that very well. What Mixer is doing right now is providing a platform for streamers, um, especially like me, who kind of got lost in the sea of saturation um, on other platforms where I thought my content was great. But when you have the rise of hundreds of thousands of, of streamers per day, it seems they're just you pull one out and they just come back. Um, you know, they're, they're providing a way and a platform for monetization that's not there on other services yet. You can get paid just by having people watch you and just willingly give you free things like it literally costs them nothing um it's a way to innovate it's a way to bring more traction to their platform and uh and retain people because if you think about it the amount of people that are watching more and more streams and and staying in a stream now um because they know that you know oh in in 10 more minutes I'll, i'll have enough to to launch a fireworks skill um which skills are the the things that you can put in chat that that give uh, the the partnered streamers uh, financial gain, um, but that retention is, is something innovative. It's it's not it's not something that you can do on other platforms yet. So what it's doing for creators is is pushing them and motivating them. Hey, I want to get to that partner. I want to be able to get paid doing the stuff that I love. And while this might not be a suitable replacement for, you know, your daytime job, uh, it definitely does help when you're hitting those milestones and you're like, dude, I just made like a hundred extra bucks this week. Um, because somebody who was watching just donated their time to me, you know, that's, it's really cool. It's, it's really mind blowing to see what streaming is becoming, whether it's on Twitch, whether it's on Mixer, YouTube, Facebook, anything like that, they keep pushing each other. This goes back to Epic and Steam and PlayStation and Microsoft. They're really pushing the limits of what they can do and how it all it benefits us, the consumer, the streamer, everybody out there. It's, it's just a really cool thing, I think. Couldn't you also say that it's mainly pushing those who are already at the point where they, at least, they make something off of it, off of Mixer, though? Because you got someone smaller like Pixels who doesn't benefit whatsoever from this, so that doesn't apply. I don't. I don't know. If... Whereas on think... something like Twitch, you can still give it to the lowest common denominator person. I, I think it's motivation, um, is what you want. Um, in terms of, in terms of, can you go somewhere else and, and possibly do something? Yeah, but it, it's motivation. If you love the platform, you love where you're at. Um, don't you want to achieve that level? Uh, to where you can get that, to to where you can get that financial gain, you want to do that. I think it's motivation, and it's just not motivation just for the streamers themselves. It's motivation for the viewers. It gives, like I said, it gives them a reason to stick around and and hang out. Like, oh my god, he just he just smiled when I gave him the fireworks. This dude is like he's doing a weird dance, it's weird crap like that. You know, mm-hmm. you go to a Fortnite stream, you make a guy, I don't know, every ten fireworks he has to drop a gun or something like that. Um, people love that, so it's just incentive for for both um, streamers and viewers alike. I think. By the way, I'm a mixer partner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So no, it's it's cool. It's cool to hear SJ's uh, take on it because um, I haven't I haven't really talked to partners much on on what they think about it. I know that that Kill, who will likely have on, he's our Breath of Variety community manager. We'll have him on. Uh, next week hopefully if schedules align um, and he really wanted to talk about season two but he's talking about it from the i want to say let's say almost partner level you know like he's, uh-huh. he's getting closer and closer to that partnership application so i think maybe he'll have a different take because he's definitely between me and between sj you know like so it's a little a little different for for everyone involved now for for us um for my community um i think in the future um you know everything's a metric right i think that 
that my community, even though them spending skills or spending sparks on my stream doesn't give me any sort of monetization, I think that it will be a metric that they look now on the partner applications and just see if the community itself was already pre-invested in that person, you know? So I think that's that's a whole other uh, statistic that they could use, not just viewership, not just our streamed or, or number of followers and stuff like that. But I, um, I think it's also cool that if you do something awesome in a game and somebody drops a, a GG sticker or something like that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Just, it just feels nice. Mm -hmm. and, and it's cool. And then it makes you think, you know what? I can get paid for this. You know, so it makes you work harder as the streamer, just being like, you know what? If, and if you're not to that point where you don't want to become a partner, it's it's still cool to see somebody's just launching fireworks in your stream because you did something awesome. You won the game. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, it, when, it, when it boils down the metric, sure. It's another thing to look at. Hey, this guy's been getting sparks this, this much in the stream. People just keep unloading on him. Um, you know, that's, that's a good value to look at. So absolutely. I, I just think it benefits everybody um all around it does sort of lean towards the partner side absolutely um but it's something you know people have worked hard for uh for years and and achieve that um i think i would love to use it if i wasn't a partner at this point and it was the same thing when i was on twitch uh looking at it you know it it was just like i need to get there i need to get there that'd be so cool like i want to do that i want to work my butt off get there and get it and now that you know i, I did stuff like that i worked my butt off and i got it just it feels great, and it's just like super rewarding to know that that platform is there supporting you, whether as a viewer, whether as a streamer, whether as a partner. Uh, no matter what you're doing, it it's, it seems like they got your back. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so do you mind? I'm not endorsed. I'm not paid to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you mind? Uh... <laughs> Curbs. Um, do you mind uh, sharing a little bit? on your uh your history like how long you you streamed how long you streamed at twitch how long you tried other platforms and and kind of your mixer road do you mind getting into that at all yeah for sure um i streamed two and a half years on twitch uh was was pretty good um had a lot of fun doing that um then i had a baby <laughs> uh <laughs> and i had to take happened. some time off streaming yep. gotcha and then uh found beam um before his mixer and then uh, Microsoft picked it up, turned it into Mixer, and uh, found a new home. Just started streaming on there. 11 months later, I became partner. Um, I mean, that's all really, really it. I didn't, I didn't swap to one place just because. Um, I swapped because it, it felt like a better place for me, for my content to fit. And it did. It absolutely worked. So... That, I mean, that's, that's really it, man. There's no, like, real struggle story. We, we found success on Twitch... Um, and I found even more on Mixer. Um, so I loved it. Cool. Now, thanks for sharing, dude. Yeah. Not a problem. All right. Um, anyone got anything else before I uh, wrap stuff up? Just that um, this article was uh, written by some executive at Mixer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why they plugged it up so much. I disagree, but I do. I do I mean, see why you. What, why you're, you say what you're saying is legitimate, and I agree with a lot of it. I just think this, I, this article specifically. I think. Now that that happens, though, honestly, curves in the, uh, in the the video game space, you know, and this is this is the next web. I mean, this isn't even like, I don't know, legit, uh, e news you know what i'm saying like uh i don't i don't think that it could have been it says by rachel kayser i don't know who rachel kayser is but uh but yeah like people write shadow articles for people just to put out as an article was almost like a press release you know so it could have been sure. totally i'm not i'm not I'm not saying it's not at all i, I see your side for sure all right cool oh. Um, let me, uh, let me wrap stuff up. Um, I want to do for the, uh, for the streamer shout out. I want to do the King SJ. Um, thanks so much for him for coming out tonight and, uh, and hanging out with us. Um, thanks for, uh, bringing all your guys over. 
I think he stepped away for a second to take care of the kiddo. But um, thanks for uh, for bringing your guys over. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, thanks for giving a little bit of backstory and all that. Um, and thanks so much to chat for uh, for livening it up and and definitely giving us your your two cents. Um, and even talking amongst yourselves, it's cool to see as well. Um, we're live again. Uh, next podcast will be next Friday um, at midnight again, uh, Central Time. Um, so we'll probably have Kill Plays and maybe a couple others uh, on the podcast with us. And uh, this will be available on Anchor, uh, Spotify, Radio Public, YouTube, all that stuff. Just uh, just follow me over on Twitter, and you'll see the uh, you'll see the tweet releases and all that stuff. Um, thanks again for uh, for Curbs and uh, Firebird for hanging out as well, guys. I appreciate your time. It was fun. Thank you for having us. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Um, I'm going to end the podcast right here. Well, we're just going to keep streaming for a second. Hey, chat, thanks so much, guys. That was awesome. You guys are fantastic.